Cruise Control streams live every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Watch us live on Facebook and YouTube. Details are in this podcast's episode information. This is Cruise Control, Control. your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Cruise Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news will fix or repair your car on the on air. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin Control. because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. That's right. You are on cruise control. Welcome, everyone. It's Fred Staub and Les Jackson, two car guys ready to talk about cars, crossovers, cars. trucks, <laughs> all kinds of things over yeah. the next hour. We're glad you're here. I'm always glad you're here, Les, to chat about it's, things. It's always fun. We've been doing it for so many years. You'd think we'd get used to it, but <laughs> it's always it's always surprise, you know, pleasant surprises. Yep. Well, we're going to start this hour with a question: Is three hundred the new two hundred? Well, we're talking about range when it comes to electric vehicles. The Hyundai Iconic uh, or Ionic. <laughs> I've never thought like those yep. names. Five EV crossover officially gets three hundred miles of range. From the EPA, it was rated this week. And Mary Barra of GM says, hey, 300 is just the baseline. Their vehicles are going to get 400, 500, even more range. So range anxiety may be an old term very soon, Les. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Audi uh, prepares a big send-off to one of its performance models. Yeah, we'll tell you about tell that. You which one. Yep. And also, uh, we'll uh, tell you about a 2022 model crossover. It costs less than the same 2021 model and now comes with all-wheel drive standards. So if you're out looking for a vehicle, that could be a yep. good one. Well, that's right. And we're going to talk tech because we always do. And this time it's Ford is building parts from plastic that was once floating in the ocean. Now... There's no Hats shortage of off that. To those guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's no shortage of that whatsoever. Man, well, there sure isn't. We'll talk about that. And a new study that says sticking with your older car could be dangerous comes, uh, it, it highlights one segment of driver. We'll talk about that and pluses and minuses. All that and more when we get rolling on this edition of Cruise Control, your on air automotive magazine. Like I say, we're glad you're here, and we got plenty to get started with. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, 300-mile range, Les. Would that be good for you? It'd be plenty. Uh, you know, it, had, it wasn't more than just a few years ago that we were talking 150 was pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Mazda brought out a vehicle uh, just just a couple of months ago, and it only has 100 miles of range, and yeah. they got lambasted for that. Um that that kind of uh, reminds me of uh, the compliance cars, you know, like the uh, Fiat 500e was 80 miles of yeah. range, and uh, it just just was there to to make a rule. So, hey, when we come back though, we're going to talk about this new Hyundai with 300 miles of electric range, and what's going on when the new Silverado e will show up too. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. Oh, yes. We'll be right back. Cruise Control is your on-air automotive magazine. Check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. Cruise Control. Hey, welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Les. He's Fred. And uh, we thought we'd start off the day. You're going to be hearing a lot about uh, electric cars yes, <laughs> from we here do it. From forever we did a lot of stories and, uh this year on electric yeah. cars it's, it's and uh this is uh, hyundai's ionic and uh ending in a q so it would almost be ionic yeah uh, <laughs> never like the name it, so much i have no to sound. Uh, it's an awkward name uh, but anyway that's what it is and 
the EPA just rated it, its uh, electric version comes in three versions, uh, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and battery. Mm-hmm. Uh, 300 mile range, which is, boy, oh boy, that's impressive. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's very usable. We talk about this a lot. What's the typical gas powered car have in range? Is it 300 miles? Is it 400 miles? Well, oh, I think the typical gas powered uh, car is, has a somewhere between three and 400 range on the tank. Okay. And it's funny, you know, we never thought about that. I don't know what the range of my car is, uh, how many miles I can go on it. Uh, I don't even know how many gallons of fuel. I think, what is it, around 12, 14 gallons in a smaller car? Yeah. Um, And, of course, they want to put as little uh, gallon capacity as they can get away with because gas weighs a lot. (laughs) six pounds a gallon and that's weight that it has to carry around now if you opt for the dual motor all-wheel drive model the range goes down to 256 which is not terrible either uh no not at all but uh they uh jose munoz who's uh, president and ceo of hyundai north america hyundai motor america i should say uh, once you get behind the steering wheel, uh, they are going to be shocked by the range, power, comfort, interior space, and advanced technology. It, it's true. I would agree. How uh, many? T- you and I, you and I drive uh, and have been driving uh, battery electrics for quite a while, and yeah, you have to drive one to just appreciate how good these things are. Yeah. Uh, how often does this happen? I get asked this many times by people that haven't driven it. They're like, yeah, but that's slow. And I tell yeah, them, no, right. it's <laughs> it's a lot faster, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I usually tell them, well, unless you've got a Corvette or a Hellcat. Yeah. I'm going to beat you at the stoplight. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And uh, it's instant power. There's no shifting that, you know, it's. I, I think I always tell people if you haven't driven one, you should drive one and, and then you'll drive understand. Yeah. yeah. And there's going to be the m- number of models is going to explode in the next, uh, yeah. Next well, year as so. I've, as I said last week, we have 38 makes and models right now. Right. That you can buy in the U S and by next, this time next year, it'll yep. be 48 or yeah. 50. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The key thing is, will they be able to build them with chip shortages and supply chain yeah. issues? And I mean, I think uh, just kind of looking uh, over things, you and I have talked about so many new vehicles. And I was uh, setting up a schedule for some new vehicles to review, do the at the wheel reviews that we do on cruise control. And I, I made a list and I thought they announced a lot of these vehicles a year plus ago, they should certainly yeah. be in the fleet, but they're not here yet because they haven't been built because of the chip shortage. The biggest yeah, story want to be of of twenty twenty one for for us, right? It's yeah, it's huge. Um, th- th- well, you know, it, it's just like everything else right now in our lives. There's a supply shortage, right? And it's a not- delivery shortage. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, over at GM, a lot of people have been asking, when will the Silverado EV show up? Uh, And there's some talk about that um, because Mary Barra, who's, uh, of course, the CEO of GM, will give the keynote speech in January at the CES show. Of course, Consumer Electronics Show, they don't even say that anymore because there's so many other things going on. Yeah. Um, so, uh, she said, she was quoted this week as saying, uh, we believe EV life starts at 300 miles of range, not 200, not 250. Uh, we've been there and done that. She's talking about the bolt. So the Ultium packs, that's the battery packs that they're going to use will deliver 300, 350, 400, 450 plus miles of range. Interesting. And yep. we'll talk a little bit about when the Silverado E might show up. 
uh, tell you a little bit more about what she said. So stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. Check us out at CruiseControlRadio.com. We'll be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control Radio, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are taking you on a ride around the automotive industry. Of course, a lot going on. It has been a year of many reveals, some of which uh, got revealed and we haven't seen them yet. Vehicles. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, It now it's... Look at this cool product that we hope to get enough parts to build eventually. Yeah, great. I'd like to buy one. Yeah. But you can't. You can't. <laughs> yeah, it's been that type of year. But um, there are some questions about, uh, we were talking, of course, about electric vehicles. Uh, there are two huge hits out there. We're going to talk about them a little later, of course. Ford uh, F-150 Lightning and, right. of course, the Hummer uh, EUV, uh, both of which have a lot of hand raisers and a lot of people putting down money. The these, by the way, the Lightning they closed the order banks on it for 2022. Yeah. Well, so, and they're not going to build know, them you. to the summer, I think. Thank you for your money. <laughs> uh. <laughs> they're taking a page out of Elon Musk's. Uh, yeah, book. yeah. Uh, so. When will the Silverado EV arrive? That was the question. Uh, and Doug Parks, who is GM's executive vice president of global product development, was asked this at a Deutsche Bank auto tech conference this week. And uh, he said, you'll see, see in 2022, of course, the Hummer SUV will launch. Of course, they've got, I think, over 60,000 orders for that. The Cadillac Lyric will launch. We know that they're right. far along in the development of that. And then very soon you'll see the Silverado E, the Sierra, and a couple of other vehicles we're going to talk about at the CES show. Uh, and those are going to launch in 2023. Uh, yeah, so well, let's, let's remember 2022 is only 20 days away. That's true. That's true. So... Um, the, basically the answer was you'll see it in early 2023. Now see it and be able to buy it is another thing. Um, we're just seeing that there's a big demand in, in the case of certain vehicles and manufacturers just don't have the demand, the, the capability to, to build these things and get them out to the dealers. But, uh, that said, there is plenty more of uh, cool electric vehicles and other vehicles coming up. One, though, we're going to say goodbye to, and that is the Audi uh, TT RS. And uh, they have some plans to say goodbye to it, Audi. Uh, it's not going away uh, in Europe and other places, just in the U.S. And they have five Audi heritage colors that will help celebrate this five-cylinder engine as it goes away uh it for a limited number there's just going to be 50 of these vehicles 10 of each color uh and these things are going to be in alpine white helios blue stone gray tizian red and mala malachetti i think it said uh, green uh, the, the leather and contrast stitching. Uh, you know what? Um, I just realized that's the word malachite. I've never seen malachite. malachite. Yes. I've malachite. never seen it written before. Ah, interesting. Oh. But each one of these TTRS Heritage Editions include uh, special uh, stitching, 174 mile per hour top speed limiter, Alcantara steering wheel with a 12 o'clock marker in leather uh, and Alcantara sh shift lever and alu, alu optic exterior elements, including <laughs> mirror, mirror housings that has yep. some aluminum trim on it. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Remember when the TT came out? I thought it was one of the most claustrophobic cars ever made. 
it was, uh, and and that was like twenty some years ago. Yeah, uh, and it it sort of uh, made a splash, and then it sort of got forgotten, mm-hmm. and then it took on. It, it, they were sort of buying segments, various types of people who were buying them, and it would catch on with one group, and then the next group would come along, and um, you know, I don't think they've sold huge numbers. No, but it's still, the, you know, it's got a following. And I think basically what's happening is the five cylinder engine is going away. Certainly yeah. there, there's probably no need to have five cylinders when you can probably do even better with four. And uh, it will be available in other international markets for some time, as the release says. Right. Some time. Yeah. So <laughs> if you want one of those. I'm sure you'll you'll pay a lot, won't you? Uh, they are rather pricey. They always were. Yeah, like if you look at the numbers. Now, this is just the regular number for it. Of course, if you go to a dealer, you might find even yeah, higher well, prices. Good, good luck. Uh, the 2022 Audi TT RS, normal non-heritage version, is $73,200. And the Audi TT RS Heritage Edition is eighty one thousand four hundred and fifty. Wow! Not including the one thousand forty five destination charge, and not including the added dealer markup. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that going on. <laughs> there. Well, especially if they're only going to make fifty. Yeah. I can tell you right now, the markup will be twenty five thousand. Uh, I at least there are some some dealers that are going well beyond that. So yeah, <laughs> if you're buying a vehicle, I think you know really you should avoid paying over MSRP. I think, uh, and you, I don't know, you may disagree with me, but I think right now, if you have to buy something, I think the smartest and most economical thing to do is lease something for a sh- for the shortest time period uh in a payment monthly payment that you know it doesn't break you and just do that until things settle out yeah well I- i'll for i always look at different vehicles and uh pricing and that and used vehicles uh you know quality used vehicles i swear all of them have gone up ten thousand dollars oh absolutely. from a year ago let's say yeah so it's time it's time to not rush out and buy something and frankly there's no year-end sales or anything like that no not, there's nothing there's nothing around so uh you know, you don't you don't have to go and rush out and buy something. And I, it's one of the biggest things I've told people. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I always buy a new car, and uh, you might want to wait until things yeah. shake out. Just, yep, um, it's just a bad time, uh, money wise, to be, be buying a car. Yeah, yeah of exactly. Any- no matter what it is or how old it is. It is, yeah. But when we come back, we're going to tell you about one that might be a good deal if you can get it for the sticker price uh, or even under. Uh, it is a 2022 model that has a lot of improvements, and it now comes standard with all-wheel drive, and the price is actually $600 less than the old model. So talk about that. That's a that That's a good deal anyway. You you slice it, and um, if the dealer sells you it for that, I mean, hey, Les, I, I got a question for you before the break. If you were buying a new vehicle now, let's say you had to buy a new vehicle, you, would you okay. still try to deal, or do are all deals off and and the floor? I would. I try. I, you know, I would try to deal. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how far it would get me. But. Yeah. Yeah. At least not go over MSRP. That's what I would say. Yeah. Try to do that. But but when we come back, we're going to tell you about this vehicle, and uh, we'll just tease it like that. I think it's a, a very popular vehicle and got a lot of improvements for 2022. That's right. 
And certainly, here's one you'd want to wait for the 2022 and not buy a 2021. So all that coming up on Cruise Control. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. All that and more. We'll be back. We are live every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Watch us on Facebook and YouTube. Details are in this podcast's episode information. Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. Les and Fred here. We are talking about uh, 2022, a few models and pricing. 2022 being just three weeks away. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> just, just scared you, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... Anyway, the uh, the Buick Encore, uh, which has been significantly refreshed for 2022, uh, new engine, more power, mm -hmm. all kinds of goodies, and it's cheaper. Yeah, and it, it's uh, mm. it, it's pretty good. It's the same price actually uh, since uh, uh, it has not gone up at all, which is interesting and. Uh, the thing is, uh, of course, they have the Encore GX, which uh, uh, is a little bit bigger. And there's some thinking that this might start going away, the Buick Encore. It starts at 25795 which is pretty good. The only change is the addition of an exterior temperature sensor. So a big, uh, big much. change there. Yeah. But we do have one vehicle. Uh, that is priced less and now comes with standard all-wheel drive. And that is the 2022 Mazda CX-5. Uh, the entry-level all-wheel drive, now they're all all-wheel drive, is actually $645 less than <laughs> the 2021 that's, model. That's very rare. Uh, we, don't, we don't talk about that very, too often. No. And uh, so the CX-5 2.5S Select is $29,125. That's $385 less. The CX-5 2.5S Preferred is $570 less, coming in at $30,385. Yeah. So, uh, and and... Now it, it depending on what you get. Now they've changed some things around. There's a carbon edition is only a hundred and fifty dollars more. That's not bad. There's a new premium CX five two point five S premium at thirty three thousand five thirty five. That's a new trim level, and then uh, the uh, others go up a little bit more, and it tops out. Uh, at 39875 for the Turbo Signature. So they've added some trim models here. That's, you know, these are big jumps. Uh, yeah, that's $12,000 over the entry. I know. Uh, I would look more for that one that's $645 less than, uh, than last year and comes with yeah. standard all-wheel drive. Remember, all-wheel drive adds at least $2,000 to the price typically, doesn't it? That's true. That's true. Now, now they did raise the destination fee. Mm -hmm. Something um, we've seen a lot of from manufacturers. Yeah. It's just kind of another spot to put the pricing in, isn't it? It seems to be. Because uh, uh, it, it doesn't cost that to deliver these anywhere in the country. Yeah, yeah. Well, what what's new for 2022? Uh, new fascia, wider lower intake, grill uh, has textured pattern rather than the current mesh. There's a thicker chrome frame. Um, there is, uh, let's see, uh, a tuned, a better tuned automatic transmission, more responsive. Inside, the seats have been shaped for greater stability. So a little tweaks here and there, uh, but the addition of all-wheel drive makes the uh, CX-5 one to watch. And I'm sure even the entry-level model, uh, which is 27125 would be a good buy. Uh, the only thing I'm not a big fan of on 
uh, Mazda is their infotainment systems. I find them kind of hard to use it's, and not yeah, intuitive. It, it's a little tedious. Yeah. Compared to everyone else. Yeah. Compared to everyone else. Uh, and they've never really been the leader in the infotainment world. So, no. um, but other than that, uh, it's a great vehicle, great styling, uh, great colors too. Great color, uh, tinted, really um, nice colors. Yeah. Uh, um, and you can pay extra for them. <laughs> they have some new, uh, premium <laughs> colors, snowflake, yeah. white, snowflake, white, pearl, mica, 395 machine, Which gray, is metallic. Like a pearl. Uh, this is my favorite, the red crystal metallic, five ninety five. Yeah, I like that color. Yeah, uh, that's one of my favorites, and you see a lot of them in that color. It's got the tinted clear coat. That's why it looks so deep and and cool, and you know that's 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 what gives it that. And it has to go to a special paint process. That's why it's more. That's another trend we've seen, frankly, in twenty twenty one. Premium paint prices. See right? it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and it used to be like, no, here's your choices of paint, and there was, right. there was no option. Choose your color. Choose your and color. there was no discussion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk a little tech, shall we? Mm-hmm. How about this thing? This is from Ford. Uh, Ford is using ocean plastic. So this is the plastic. There's seas of this stuff floating. It's water bottles, who knows what else, floating. And they have ships go around and kind of scoop it up. And now they're using these materials to make uh, a little plastic piece that holds a wiring loom. Uh, And it is the first time that they have used this type of material, this type of waste material, to uh, make this stuff. I think it's great. Uh, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, they're going to clear up 13 million metric tons of plastic per year. Well, I should say 13 million metric tons of plastic per year enters the ocean. They can't clean it all up. That would be yeah, nice if they could. A, about a thousand square mile section of ocean. Wow. And they, these just things, they, they, horrible. They, they just float, float through and, you know, in a, a giant sea of plastic, they say you can – be in the middle of the ocean and there's the sea of plastic of bottles and who knows what else. So, you know, I only, I only make nasty comments to two kinds of people. Okay. Uh, I usually, you know, if somebody's doing something that I think is objectionable, I just, I don't say anything. I just shake my head, but two kinds of people, one people that, that are leaving grocery carts uh, in the parking lot. I always confront them. <laughs> okay and the other is people littering uh, it, it, yeah and i always say you know you you bought it and you carried it here from your house why can't you carry it back home and throw it out yeah and well, they invariably you know say something insulting to me <laughs> i don't care well but it just that has always bothered me i'm amazed that uh, in the last Many decades, I haven't been beaten up. For, Just, I would say, watch that. yourself lightly because people are a little, yeah. are a little bit more uh, inclined to beat people up and do crazy things. But um, this is the first time this has been used, this type of uh, material to make something. It, they also use discarded nylon fishing nets, which is a big problem. They make, uh, they dry these things in salt water. They make small pellets out of it, and then, of course, it's made into this wire clip. Not the first time Ford has done this. Of course, if you remember, they've made like soy-based foam for yep. their seats. They've used uh, denim, recycled denim for insulation in cars, um, and uh, plastic bottles for uh, floor mats and things. Yeah, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I that's just hey. Hats off. Yeah, hats off to them. It's really good because the stuff is just going to float around uh, forever. It just never dissolves yeah. unless you really do a process on it. And uh, this is this is what happens, you know. So uh, great use of it. I, I hope they I hope they do more of that. As I say, they scoop it up with these big ships that have sort of a mouth on them, and uh, and just they kind of sail into the the stream of this stuff. And uh, scoop it up and then 
you know, kind of harvest it. So is, do you think there's money in uh, for the companies that have these ships to, to, I don't think so. I think it probably costs more, but it's a good thing to do. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it probably costs more, but it's a good thing to do. So we're glad to uh, highlight it for, for Ford, and it's our talking tech segment here on Cruise Control, the show you're listening to, uh, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson, always looking for great stories um, and interesting stories that uh, – that uh, well, gets you thinking about maybe your next vehicle. Yeah, yeah. We one thing we have to highlight is a good thing that Mini's doing. Uh, they are trying to get animals adopted, and it's always an excuse to show animals here. So <laughs> we like doing that. Uh, they, uh, Mini and USA and Best Friends Animal Society, are partnering partnering <laughs> uh, <laughs> this week with no cost adoptions at Best Friends locations around the country. And I think that's a great thing for Mini to be doing. They want to get them all adopted, which is a great thing. So hats off to Mini. And if you're looking for a pup, check out Best Friends locations in Atlanta, that's Houston, right. Los Angeles, New York, Northwest Arkansas, Salt Lake City, and Kanab, Utah. So, hey, we will be right back with Cruise Control. Stay tuned. Cruise Control is your on-air automotive magazine. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com. Cruise Control. Hey, it is Cruise Control. We are still cruising. I'm not sure we're under control, but it doesn't matter because we <laughs> definitely have the stories. And, um, and some people object to this sort of thing, uh, but I don't. And that's Toyota uh, is is accepting uh, blemished parts. Yeah, well, it depends yeah. what the part is. I mean, if it's a broken well, windshield. Sure. <laughs> yeah. well, that, well, see, that's that's not blemished. <laughs> well, uh, but but maybe like a scuff on the on the dashboard. Ah, uh, uh, or maybe it's how about a part that goes under the dashboard that you'd never see? I wouldn't have a problem with that. Who cares? Yeah. Well, and you say, why are they doing that? What are they just lowering standards? No, it's the fact that people can't get parts. So they would be very picky in the past. And if a part had a little bit of casting flash on it or something like that, they would say, nope, you know, we want a yeah. better part. But now you can't get the parts. So instead, so they can keep the uh, production line going. They are accepting these parts, right? Exactly. Uh, they've told their suppliers that scratches and blemishes are okay, but they they can't affect performance or certainly the longevity. Um, you know, it can't be something like that. You because, can't have an engine mount with a crack through it and say, well, yeah. it, it will hold up for four or five years. Yeah. Well, you know, this transmission gear has rough teeth on it but it'll it, still turn it, it, will, it will work it will work <laughs> fine for the first 10,000 yeah, miles it'll wear off all of that uh, I mean obviously they, they have quality control but but you know if if something is um, you know is is scuffed or dented and it doesn't really show up I mean that's just fine don't throw it away Right, exactly. And uh, don't say, well, you know what, we can't build this uh, this vehicle because of it. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting news. I don't think you'll see any difference in uh, no. in, in the vehicles uh, or anything noticeable. Um, do you think they'll keep doing this going forward? I don't think so. And the reason is because, especially the Japanese companies, they're committed to zero uh, defects, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they, they Deming, uh, what was Deming's first name back about 30 years ago, the great industrial consultant. And he said, if you accept uh, like a 3% error rate, you'll always get a 3% error rate. You'll never get better. 
you'll never get better. You can only get better if you accept zero errors. Wow. And that's what the Japanese did. And that's, that's what brought them into such dominance. Yeah. Well, let's uh, switch gears here and talk about a study from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the IIHS. Of course, these are the people that kind of set the standards uh, for testing, crash testing vehicles. They have an interesting study that said older people typically hang on to their cars because they're not driving them much um, and they don't don't want to spend the money. Maybe they're retired. They're uh, maybe they're on a pension or social security and they don't want to spend the money. And frankly, they use the car just to go shopping or, or go down the right. street. Uh, makes sense, right? Uh, don't want to spend big money, especially these days on it. But the IIH study found that uh, cars that are older were significantly at higher risks for injury uh, when uh, when they get into a crash. Uh, and this has accelerated since there have been so many developments in safety uh, over the last, let's say, 10 years of cars and vehicles. Uh, and uh, older drivers are far more likely to be driving sedans and hatchbacks, they said, uh, mm -hmm. which, of course, are going up against SUVs. Uh, which are popular with younger buyers. So, you see, that's the problem with SUVs. If you say, okay, well, now I want an SUV, everyone gets an SUV, so everyone... I mean, it's like, does it keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger till we all drive it, monster trucks? It seems to be heading that way, which is much to our uh, disappointment. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's escalating. And and uh, I you know we we own sedans. Uh, we're rather competent drivers, so you know we're not intimidated. Uh -huh. But oh, well, you know, but certainly, did they have to do a study to, that that proved that older cars are less safe well, um, than, than new ones? Just here's the number here. If older drivers retired into safer cars, it could save lives, the IIHS says. Uh, it could reduce – they could reduce by 3% for uh, drivers 70 and older and 5% for drivers 80 and older if they drove vehicles with the same safety profile as their middle-aged counterparts. Problem is, though, they're expensive, and they probably yeah. don't have 30, 40 grand laying around to – pay for a car that goes, you know, to the grocery store and church and, uh, you know, the doctor's appointments, right? Yeah, when you're driving a thousand miles a year, it's pretty tough to justify a, a thirty-five dollars or $40,000 car. Right, exactly. Uh, so what do you do? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I certainly agree. And certainly now, uh, bears repeating, even if you say, well, I'll get a a two or three year old, uh, you know, gigantic truck with a push pump around it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but used. But you know, these things are crazy prices. There's crazy prices. I, I just don't think there's a way around it. You know, unless, uh, no. uh, I mean, the only way you could do it would be to buy, let's something like a Nissan Versa or Toyota Corolla or whatever, and then you're buying a smaller vehicle. I mean, it will have updated safety, but, you know, it's still going against the battering rams of the giant uh, SUVs, right? Well, yeah. Um, and w on top of all that, we're in an era of rapidly increasing fatality rates on the highways. Bad combination. Yeah, bad combination, I think. People are driving way, way, way over there. Uh, recklessly. Rec recklessly, yeah. Uh, interesting. There's also uh, another study that they call it the traffic jam mystery. Our roads are more crowded, but it's not due to work uh, because cities are not crowded at all. This is com coming from Inrix that does a lot of the number crunching and that. Um, and they studied different places in Europe, but this holds true for the U.S. here. Uh, 
global traffic remains below pre-COVID levels, but yeah. the highways are very crowded, but they don't know where they're going. They're not going to work. The the inner uh, the cities are are yeah. not crowded, but the highways are crowded. So what do you yeah, make of we that? We see it. We see it around D.C. here. Yeah. Um, I I guess people are just out on errands. I don't know. Trips to U.S. downtown areas were twenty two percent below pre pandemic level levels, and down as much as forty nine percent in San Francisco, where many tech workers will work remotely. So yet the roads are crowded. So who knows? Who yeah. knows where they're all going? Fabulous trips, just driving around. Who knows? Uh, I just, you, I, you have I, no I answer. Can't even, can't even guess. <laughs> and that's okay. That's uh, okay. I'm always asking, where are these people going on the, on the road? Yeah. Hey, we appreciate you listening to cruise control. Don't forget to check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com can find out about our Facebook page, uh, our Twitter feed, the YouTube page, and more. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. And I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road. Bye. Cruise Control streams live every Saturday starting at 10 a.m. Eastern. Watch us live on Facebook and YouTube. Details are in this podcast's episode information.